Yo, welcome back to the channel, boys and girls. Today we are doing a long-term review on my Kogo bearings, ceramic bottom bracket, and oversized pulley wheels. Now, before we get started, there are a couple of things that I would like to mention to you guys. Number one, I just wanted to apologize for not putting out videos as often as I have in the past. And the reason being has simply been because I've been really busy training on the bike. Over these last couple of months, I've been doing about 15 to 20 hours each each week on the bike, which comes out to be about a thousand miles or 1600 kilometers every single month. So I've been really, really busy and I'm hoping that once this season is over, that I'll be able to go back to putting out videos more regularly for you guys. And the second thing I want to mention is if your main goal is to eke out every bit of performance on the bike, then buying a ceramic bottom bracket is not, I repeat, is not a worthy or wise investment. There are plenty of other ways if performance, like I said, is your goal. There are plenty of other ways uh, to maximize your performance on the bike, like you could just lose weight or perhaps optimizing your aero position on the bike. Both these things are a lot cheaper than a ceramic bottom bracket. But like I said before, not every purchase that we make in the world of cycling has to make the absolute sound advice. So anyway, Let's get started. Now, the version of the Kogo bearings bottom bracket that I purchased for my bike was the SRAM slash dub BB30 version. Now, the reason being is because for my bike, which is a LA Sprint, that is the bottom bracket that it uses. And the reason why I bought this was because when I originally installed the standard $30 dub bottom bracket for my LA Sprint, I noticed that only after about three or 400 miles that I would hear this sort of weird squeaking or cracking noise whenever I was putting out a lot of power on the bike. And as it turns out, once I inspected everything else, I checked the pedals, I checked the lubrication, I checked the chain, I checked all these things thinking that that was what was causing the cracking. It turns out that just the plastic bottom bracket cup had failed and it had cracked. So I figured this would be a good time to check out the world of ceramic bottom brackets. And thankfully for Kogo Bearings, at the time of purchase, they were offering a free set of oversized pulley wheels with any purchase of a ceramic bottom bracket. So in my case, I figured it would be a good opportunity to try out both the pulley wheels and the bottom bracket. Oh, and I should mention too that the reason why I'm running a Dub BB30 SRAM uh, bottom bracket is because I am also running running a quirk spider base or crank base power meter. Now, the only crappy part about uh, purchasing a new bottom bracket is that means that you have to uninstall the one existing on your bike, in which my case was the original $30 dub plastic bottom bracket, like I mentioned. And it was kind of a pain in the butt, especially because it was already cracked. And so just keep that in mind that, you know, if, if you feel uncomfortable installing and uninstalling your bottom bracket, then it might make the most sense to just go to a local bike shop to have it installed. They'll probably charge you anywhere between 10 to $20 USD, but that way you can save your frame if that is something that is concerning of you. After installing uh, the new ceramic bottom bracket and reinstalling uh, the crank and the crank arms, I noticed immediately just how freely the crank would spin. Um, now granted the chain wasn't installed or anything like that, but it's just amazing how, how easily and effortlessly that the crank was able to spin. Now again, this is not any sort of metric when it comes to performance because again, you have to be able to test it out in the real world. But I do feel like that when I am putting down the power that the cranks do spin just that little bit more freely than they did with the $30 uh, original dub bottom bracket. Now, about the ceramic bottom bracket, I actually don't really have a lot to report to you guys. Um, of course, the bearings are ceramic. I chose the road version over the cross version. I believe the cross version has a couple of more uh, seals uh, to prevent dust and other debris from getting in as easy as the road version. And so far guys, after 2000 miles or 3,200 kilometers, the ceramic bottom bracket is still spinning as freely as it was when I first made the purchase. Now moving on to the pulley wheels. Now the pulley wheels are made of aluminum. Now the bearings too are also ceramic. Uh, these were super easy to install. Originally when I uh, purchased this, I, I did kind of have this idea of wanting to buy an oversized 
uh, derailleur and pulley wheel system, but I didn't feel like spending four or even $500 to buy this oversized derailleur system was worth it to me. And so I think just purchasing these oversized pulley wheels is a nice alternative. And being that they were free, it was a no brainer. Another thing that people have asked me about when it comes to those oversized pulley wheels is the shifting performance, uh, especially when you're out on the road. Now, I haven't had any issues with this as well. Now, it's easy to set up your bike and index it when it's on the, uh, the stand at home but the real test is when you're out on the road when you're putting out a lot of power and I haven't seen a decrease in inefficiency when it comes to uh, shifting uh, whether it's during a sprint whether it's uphill the oversized pulley wheel just works um, and I should also mention too that uh, when installing these oversized uh, pulley wheels and the version I have is the 12 tooth and the 14 tooth uh, combination of pulley wheels um, you will have to add uh, two chain links to the overall length of your chain. All right, guys, so as you can see, I actually had to install a brand new chain. The reason being was because uh, after I had installed the jockey wheels, I was getting a lot of chain rub, a lot of vibrations, and a lot of shifting issues, and I couldn't figure out why. And it turns out, according to Kogel's uh, website um, in their manual, is that when you install these uh, oversized pulley wheels, you have to actually install a longer chain. So it turns out that my original chain was just a tad too short. Uh, Kogel's website says that you need to add an additional two rivets to your chain in order uh, to have the best shifting performance uh, with their pulley wheels. So if you're measuring your chain doing the big, big method where you account for two rivets, extra two rivets that is, you actually have to account for four additional rivets um, in order uh, to make these oversized pulley wheels work. So as you can see with this new chain, uh, it's definitely, uh, it's pretty slick. <laughs> uh, it's an oil slick type of chain. It's really cool. Um, as you can see right now, I'm obviously cross chaining, which cross training, which you would never do, but this just gives you an idea of what everything looks like. And same thing with, with these pulley wheels as well, guys, is now that it's been 3,200 kilometers or 2,000 miles, they still sprint as freely as they have when I first bought them. So, so far overall for both the ceramic bottom bracket and the pulley wheels, I don't really have any, any issues with them at all. There isn't really anything to report. They just work as intended. So now the question becomes, is spending $220 worth it for just a ceramic bottom bracket? And the answer is, if it's only about performance, absolutely not. Like I said previously, there are other ways to spend your money when it comes to performance more efficiently. But if you are, say, building a brand new bike or if you're replacing a bottom bracket, whether it be that your previous one failed like mine, and if it's a brand that is also offering a free set of pulley wheels with your purchase of the bottom bracket, then I would say that it's definitely worth it. Plus, it is cool to see those oversized uh, pulley wheels uh, spinning on it. And I think it just makes your bike look just that little bit more cooler. And I do think there are some performance gains to be had there. So that's about it, guys. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them down below. And I will check you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace. Thank you.